Welcome back. President Barry Jagdu has called for greater focus to be placed on issues affecting the sugar industry in Guyana. The president has met with representatives from Gaisuko to discuss the state of the industry and decide on steps which can be taken to reverse the current trends. More in this report. President Barra Jagdio has met with the Gaisuko board to discuss problems surrounding the Skeldon Sugar Factory and low productivity levels at estates. Speaking about the factory, the head of state noted that more emphasis needs to be placed on issues consequent to the delay. Um, we are very happy that when we concluded this contract that it was concluded as a turnkey contract. So the risk of the factory working and being um, in good shape lies with the contractors and we don't only accept a factory that is you know in good shape and that has a guarantee as per contract so any cost of fixing the problems that they are currently experience, uh, experiencing will be borne by the Chinese however he says the delay remains a concern since the industry is still plagued by significant losses that we are suffering losses because we have to keep the old factory going and we also, um, which is much more inefficient and then it would affect the provision of electricity from burning the gas at the new, new factory. We are also very concerned about the, the two ward cellar units that were established there, put in place, that one would develop problems this quickly, but I gather that it is being resolved. The Guyanese leader has also reiterated his concern about the drop in sugar production and Gaisuko's subsequent failure to meet its target. I said to them I don't buy the explanation that weather is the only factor. It has to do with management and you know, leadership in the, in the entity. So I've asked them to come up with um, just short documents very concise documents in about six or seven areas mm -hmm. that are critical to output um, areas for personnel, research, agricultural practices, a whole range of other areas. The comprehensive report, which must also include a plan of action, is expected to be submitted to the president by next month. Government had mandated Gaisuko to take immediate steps to correct its poor performance. Independent financial and production reviews in sugar were also ordered to assess the current situation confronting the industry and propose possible solutions. Agriculture Minister Robert Prasad also established an inquiry committee to investigate the production decline on the East Demerara Estates. Reporting for the 6 o'clock news, I'm Shard Lal. Cari foreign governments will need to invest significant sums before they can benefit from the EU funding to implement the Economic Partnership Agreement. This is according to Cabinet Secretary Dr. Roger Luncheon, who says preparations before the funds could be accessed may cost even more than the amount available. Edward Lane has been following this issue. The European Union says it will make 165 million euros available through the European Development Fund for Regional Programs to assist with implementing the EPA. Principal negotiator of the CARI Forum EU EPA, Carl Falkenberg, says this will be used to support extensive development of operation provisions of areas covered by the EPA, including e-commerce, cultural industries and trade over the next five years. But Cabinet Secretary Dr. Roger Longin says government will have to make significant investment before getting hold of this funding. He notes that this is among the many reservations Ghan had before signing the trade pact. Which to us places a heavy burden on our resources to put our, our house in order to actually access these benefits that the EPA seeks to offer. The Cabinet Secretary also noted that government has been engaging several organizations that called for the deal to be implemented in stages. Programs, activities, endpoints, deliverables, conditionalities. Quite a bit of work has to be done before you start seeing some of the promised benefits in the EPA and similar such international agreements. 
President Barack Jagdi in the past had also raised concerns about the funding to implement the deal. He noted that it may cost up to $1 billion to be implemented. Edward Lane, the 6 o'clock news. Human Services Minister Priya Manik Chan has announced that government will set up a special court and the decision was made at Tuesday's cabinet meeting. In the context of some shared responsibilities between the executive branch of government and the judiciary in the implementation of our decision to establish a family court. But he said... Minister Manning Chan adds that the facility will come under the jurisdiction of the High Court and will deal with the family-related disputes, with all family-related disputes, rather. The minister says given the new laws that government intends to institute, it was decided that the legal system will be better served if there was an independent family court. She was, however, unable to say how soon this court would be set up, but explained that some time would be needed to get infrastructural aspects settled. China's trade relations with Latin America and the Caribbean has generated some 102.6 billion U.S. last year and is continuing to increase. This was disclosed by Chinese ambassador to the United States, Zhao Wenong, at an IDB press conference yesterday when China was inducted into the bank's membership. Edward Lane reports. So the zoo says despite the current economic downslide, trade between Latin America and the Caribbean and China has been soaring in recent years and already the $100 billion set target for this year has been achieved. He however noted that there is a surplus on the side of China with that country exporting about $2 million or more than what it imported from the region. This he says is reducing though and shortly there might be more imports from the region than exports. So, so we hope uh, you know, the, uh, the trade will continue uh, to maintain this kind of momentum because we believe it's uh, mutually beneficial. Ambassador Zhu, meanwhile, dispelled the notion that China has an interest in the region with the intention of exploiting its resources, noting that China's interest is based in economic cooperation and stronger trade relations. This, he says, is a win-win situation for both parties since China is investing heavy in the entire region. You know, we need to work together to develop the resources uh, you know, in the world on a, uh, on a sort of rational and a regional basis. Uh, so. I think China you know, want to uh, work with uh, uh, every country in the world to make sure that uh, you know, energy you know, will be used more efficiently and the uh, environment will be protected uh, uh, so that we will have a more sustainable development shared by all, uh, by all the countries. He is also calling on the developed countries in the world to work closely with China and help the less developed nations out of poverty. He meanwhile expressed his satisfaction with the U.S. President George W. Bush to call a summit to look at the reform of international financial institutions. Edward Lane, The Six O'Clock News.